here we go, double bubble. Right, cool. So what I'm gonna do now is take you through five steps to a powerful mindset during turbulent times. And as you can see, I've whipped out the whiteboard. When I get the whiteboard out, that means I am serious. I mean business, there's no mucking about now. This is serious stuff for serious times with a whiteboard and everything, right? Because now is the time to fire up our mindset. So there's five points here, there could be 50. So I'll work through various points over the coming days and weeks because the more of this I think that you can take on board, the better it is for you and, and for myself because I think these are turbulent times and it's now more important than ever to be on top of your psychology and your physiology, to be that rock, to be that strong person within your community, within your family. Um, now is the time more than ever to be all over this stuff. And maybe this is the first time in a long time that you've had the time because maybe your social calendar has been diminished somewhat or maybe you haven't got as many of those um, demands on you through the working week because you're at home or whatever it is, right? There might be an opportunity. We'll come to the green shoots of opportunity a bit later in these five steps, but really it's just to start to give you some ideas that might help you through this period because ultimately we wanna come out the other side of this stronger than we went into it, right? That's the name of the game, right? Maybe there's an opportunity here. I'm gonna cover that through these points um, as we move along. And when I say opportunity, I wanna be really clear. This is not opportunity as in, oh, we can you know, sell some face masks and make some money type opportunity, not that low stuff. I'm talking about the opportunity to grow as people through the challenge, right? And I think it's really important more now than ever to be on our A game. So I'm gonna keep sharing stuff like this because one, it's helping me learn and grow myself. And two, if I can give a little bit back to you guys, then that's the ultimate win-win, right? And on top of that, bigger and broader than that, I think now is the time to give, to receive. And I think it's really important that we're all out there, right? Doing our bit as much as we can. Anyway, right, let's get stuck into it. So. The five steps to a powerful mindset during turbulent times, right? Step one, a worthy opponent. This is really important. I was reading Seneca this morning. Seneca is a great Stoic philosopher. We'll come to that on point four. Um, and what I was reading from Seneca, and I'll paraphrase, is that he was suggesting that through turbulent times, through hardship, very often is when we face a worthy enough opponent to bring the best out in us, right? And that's really important, I think, to get our heads around. I think for many people, that worthy opponent doesn't show up. Yeah, there's the traumas and the ebbs and flows of life, but very often there's not a big enough opponent that shows up to really find out who you're made of. It's a little bit like, if you compare it to sport, I guess, you compare it to all the great footballing teams like some of the greatest ever games are in those moments when there's a worthy opponent the elite play the elite and it just pushes them all to a new level and I think that's the same in life sometimes we need a, an opponent that's worthy enough that we can wrestle with that actually brings the best out in us that actually shows us who we can really be and who we really are and maybe that's now maybe that's what's going to come out the other side of this for many of us because the truth is this right we will prevail and we will come through this. That is a fact, 100%. And maybe this is the test, this is the opponent that many of us haven't gone consciously looking for but has appeared and it's there in front of us and now's our opportunity to do our bit, to be that role model. I'll, I'll move through some of the other points but the broad picture is maybe this is our opportunity to do something really powerful, to meet that foe, that that opponent that's worthy enough to draw the very, very best out of our soul almost, to show who we are worth. And on the other side of that is unbelievable growth and unbelievable confidence and courage that flows from that experience. So maybe this is that opponent. Step one. Step two, plan your day. You know, I'm all over a bit of planning. I love a bit of planning because Planning is key, especially in turbulent times, right? That sense of control over what you don't have control over. And what I mean by that is, back to philosophy again, 
Epictetus, the great Stoic philosopher, teaches that we only have control over one thing and one thing only, that's our beliefs, right? I totally believe in that, right? That is so true. When you think about it, that's one of the most powerful things you'll ever hear. And much of modern day self-help, um, psychiatry, cognitive behavioral therapy is pretty much based around those type of concepts that you only have control over one thing and one thing only, that's your beliefs. And ultimately what you believe determines how you act, right? So your beliefs and your actions. And it's so true, you don't really have control over your loved ones. We don't have full control over them. We don't have full control over our health. We certainly don't have control over this virus that's out there at the moment. We just don't. All we can do is our bit, control our beliefs through this period. We can't control other things. And much of life stress, worry, concern is trying to control things outside of our control, right? So one of the most powerful things that you can connect with is planning your day because there, it gives you a sense of control, but at the same time realize that even if you meticulously plan out your day from 7 a.m. till 10 p.m., things will go wrong and that plan will get thrown out the window at times, right? But it's so important to plan because it, it builds on this sense of control. And then alongside that, know that you only have control over one thing, one thing only, that's your beliefs, right? Get into that mindset. Stop trying to control everything else around you because that will drive you nuts. And that's where much of the stress is and the anxiety is. And the concern is control yourself, control your beliefs, right? And then you'll create that calm, rock-like, solid frame and posture, I think, within your family. It's really important. All right, so... And when I say plan, let's just broaden that quickly. Journal of a morning. Just journal out what your day looks like as best you can. I spoke about this this morning. Um, plan for your trigger moments. If you've got events in that day that's going to really test you more than others, it could be when the kids wake up and they start running riot between 10 to 12, or it could be that moment where you know you've got to fulfill your work online and try and look after the kids. Plan around those moments as best you can. It's not a perfect solution to any of this stuff at the moment, but giving that sense of planning will give you a broader sense of control. But again, always rein it back into that you only have one contr control over one thing and one thing only, that is your beliefs, right? So use that planning of your day to give you a bit more space to control your own beliefs. That's all you can do in this testing time, but plan, 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 it makes such a difference, right? And just to add into that, just while I'm on a roll, part of your planning is to reconnect with who you are on a daily basis. I teach this in Let's Do This in the book, in the masterminds that I run, constantly connect with who you are because we're gonna forget in these stressful times, like who you are as a person. Like do that work, connect with that, then plan your day. Then remind yourself you have control over one thing and one thing only, that's your beliefs. Right, let's move on from that one. Read philosophy, number three. If you get an opportunity to read philosophy, stoicism is the perfect philosophy in turbulent times. That was why it was written, that was why it was created. 2000 years ago, when these great philosophers started to, to spring up in stoicism, Marcus Aurelius, Seneca, Epictetus, these amazing, I mean, the, if you read their works, if you read the meditations by Marcus Aurelius, it's only a short book, who was the emperor of Rome at the time. It's his personal diary. It's just stunning. It's all based on the, the principles of Stoicism. Epictetus was a slave that was freed, that went on to become um, one of the greatest philosophers, in my opinion, of all time. Then Seneca is another one. Just to come back to um, Epictetus, his book is called The Erishadon. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a really short book. It's about 60 pages. Marcus Aurelius's Meditations, also a short book. You can get through these books really quickly, um, are really worth reading in the current climate. It's really powerful. Seneca then, who is the master, in my opinion, read anything and everything you can by Seneca. And the reason I think we should in these times is because when they were writing, times were turbulent, unbelievably turbulent. You know, famine was around the corner. Like, there was barbarians at the gate. They could be exiled. There was death all around them. You know, families that wouldn't live very, you know, I think the rate of children that didn't make it past about eight or nine was horrifically high. So imagine within their sphere, they were going through like the most traumatic times over and over again. 
So they had to learn to deal with that. And stoicism really sprung up from that. And that is back to one of those concepts I mentioned earlier, learning to control what you have control over, only your beliefs. So I think stoicism in particular at the moment is worth reading, getting into, because it's, it's like a mind gym for the present turbulent times. It really is. All the stuff that they went through is very similar to what we're going through now, only probably a lot worse in truth. I know things could go a bit wonky down the line, but in general, what they went through was pretty horrific and unbelievably unsettling and chaotic and unnerving. Yet they had this philosophy that allowed them to stay strong through those turbulent times. So it's, I will cover a lot more on um, stoicism over the coming weeks. I think it's really important. But anyway, number four, look for the green shoots. This, I think, is really important. Just checking, I'm still on the camera. <laughs> um, look for the green shoots. There are green shoots in amongst the chaos. There always is. And maybe this is an opportunity for you to spend more time with your loved ones and to really talk. Maybe this is an opportunity to study and learn and grow. Maybe this is an opportunity to really get to know your children a bit better. You know, to spend real quality time with them. I know you can't get out of the house necessarily or do any of those fun things that sort of distract them, but maybe this is an opportunity. Maybe there's opportunities, these little green shoots of uh, opportunity in amongst this unsettled period. They're always there. And I think even metaphorically, if you're in the UK, it's spring outside and it is beautiful. When you go out and you run now and the daffodils are coming up, and the bluebells are going to be coming up soon, right? I think it's really reassuring that the world and nature and everything else just carries on, just carries on. It'll carry on quite happily without us. And we're starting to see that around the world, world aren't we? We're starting to see the world heal a little bit. These are maybe some green shoots through the chaos that actually the, the earth itself, our climate is getting a chance to recover. Like there are green shoots. There's not going to be loads of them, but they're there if you look for them. And I think if you can cling to them, I think that creates a sort of forward thinking mindset that's going to help you through this turbulent time. And again, fire you up so that by the time we get through this, and we will, you come out the other side stronger. I think it's really important. The role model mindset number five. This is the final one. I've been talking about this a fair bit lately. This is you becoming that hero, becoming that leader. And everything we're talking about here is going to help with that, that mindset of you're the rock in the family. Maybe you're the one who's calm when around you other people are starting to lose, uh, not lose their mind, but they're starting to become very unsettled. And I think your opportunity now is to be that rock, is to be that solid role model, hero-like character within your community, within your family, within your friendship groups, like the person that's standing strong right, and owning this thing. Right, and actually in doing so, it's incredibly powerful to your own mindset because you have to adopt that structure of someone's going to be strong, someone's going to be able to stand tall through these testing times, but also people feed off that energy. Like we give out so much energy, people can sense it, they can feel it. Your children, your partners, your family, your loved ones can sense it when someone's strong and there's something incredibly powerful about that. And I don't mean in a physical sense, I just mean in that emotional energy sense of, do you know what, you know, we can deal with this, we can get through this. And that flows outwards. We know that even through the research that our emotions flow, ebb and flow to our friends, friends and friends, friends. And it's unbelievably powerful. So I think the role model mindset works in two ways. One, it puts you in a place where you have to stand up and be strong. And I think that's incredibly settling for you as an individual. And then the energy that that gives off will flow out to those people that you love. Cool. All right. So that's five things you can do to power up your mindset in turbulent times. I just wanted to share them. This is a bit of an experiment because I'm doing a live and a video at the same time. And I can do more of this if and when it works. And I'll give you a bit of advance warning in the future because I know this was a bit impromptu, but I'll keep coming on and doing these things. I'll give you the advance warning. This is just the tip of the iceberg, but I just wanted to just share a couple of things just to sort of get us thinking along those lines that there's a lot more that we can do within these turbulent times. And the number one thing we can do is work on our mindset because maybe our physical limitations are being hampered slightly by the fact that maybe we can't move as freely as, as we once would or we can't get to work or whatever, but that doesn't stop us doing that inner work. 
Now's the time to do the inner work. If you change your beliefs on the inside, you will transform everything you see on the outside.